Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, good, a, a little different video today. Uh, normally I'm doing a lot of sea trout and pollock fishing, but because the macro are in, I thought it'd be stupid not to do a video about it. So I'm going to try and give that a go, see what happens. Uh, but if you're watching this, you're most likely going to be a beginner and new to sea fishing. So I'll try and go into a bit of depth with the gear that I'm using and targeting macro, etc. So first of all, I'll start off with the gear that I'm using. This is a 7 to 17 gram HDO Urban Finesse with a Fox Rage uh, 2500 reel spooled with 8 pound diver. When I'm macro fishing, I don't use I don't use heavy gear. I don't I don't personally see the point in using a big beach caster with feathers. That's not my my idea of having a, a fun fishing session for macro. Using heavy gear like beach casters, you know, constantly casting out, it's it's wear and tear on your arms. It's, it's just overkill. There's really no point in that. That's, if you're into that, then fair enough, if that's what you want to do. But again, I'm just going from personal preference. I like to use the lightest gear as possible because you're gonna have a lot more fun on it. The macro put up a great fight. They are absolutely animalistic fighters. So using a light gear setup like this is ideal if you want to have a bit of fun anyway. For the lure, eh, Again, lures for macro, if it's got a bit of silver, if it's got a bit of shine or bling to it, you're probably going to catch a macro, no doubt. But I'm using a Super Sprat 12 gram, it is my favourite lure. I use it for sea trout fishing, I use it for pollock fishing, it's just a very versatile lure. I've probably said that too many times before, but it is a, it's a great lure. But as I said, for macro fishing, you don't really need a specific lure as long as you've got a bit of bling and shine to it you're gonna catch that's a fact if they're there you're gonna catch so yeah but again little small lure uh, gets a good cast distance casting distance as well it's not a priority when macro fishing especially when you're fishing fishing from a pier structure like this it's normally deep water and I've had a little recce for the first 20 minutes of my session I've not had a cast yet but there is sprats kicking about the edge of the pier structure. So that entails to me that the macro will be in close at some point tonight. Uh, I've had plenty of times before over the years where I have literally used the shallow areas of a pier to catch macro. I see them for a visual aspect of seeing them chase in sprats. It's amazing to see it. Hopefully we're in for the chance. I reckon we are because I caught a macro last Sunday here and the weather's died down a bit. We've not had a great deal of weather over the west coast here for the past two weeks. So this is probably the best we're going to get. Macro fishing, there's not a lot to it, you know, it's, it is a lot of fun. If you want to fill up your bait freezer as well, that's great. Uh, I've not brought a plastic bag with me, so I can't actually keep anything. So everything I'm going to hopefully catch will be returned. Uh, for handling wise as well, I try, I try my best not to touch the fish. Usually, see because I'm using barbless hooks, normally they just come off the hook in the net. So normally after that I'll just uh, pat them in. But usually when I do bring a plastic bag I will take macro from the freezer. It's looking, it's looking decent. I've got, I've got a bit of faith in me in catching macro. So i just have to give it a shot, see what happens. There we go guys, we have a, a large show of sprats coming into the, the bay area of the pier which technically would probably, they'd probably imagine that's probably the safest point so hopefully with time we'll be able to catch something and hopefully something comes in and chases them, fingers crossed. There you go guys, second cast with the super sprat has got me into a fish. Presumably a macro. Oh yes, this is a macro. Doesn't look a bad size macro as well. Oh, look at the fight on that. Oh man, fishing for macro in light gear. Yes, please. That's amazing. Nice. Hopefully it just comes off the hook nice and easily. Oh. Nice. 
wish I had a bigger net. Ah, there we go, beautifully netted. Yep. A macro indeed. Ice fight. I'm going to try not to touch it. There we go, it came off the hook. There we go. I'm going to get this back. Not a bad little size. I'll take that. There we go. There you go, buddy. Off you go. Good start. Right. There you go, guys. Lovely. Get it back quickly. Yes. In all fairness, I do try my best not to touch the macro. I hope usually they do come off the hook. I'm using barbless hooks, but they do usually tend to come off a lot easier. Uh, again, I don't know on that theory that, you know, touching macro, it probably does do something. Uh, but I do, I've wet my hands, etc., before touching them. But again, that's just a theory, who knows. I'm not a scientist, but I try my best. There we go. Yep. Oh yes, nice. Oh. Trying to see if I can net this one. It's netted to an extent. There we go, guys. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad. We'll get them back. There we go. Yeah, surely, as I said, obviously, as a beginner, and you're just getting into sea fishing. Usually, macro is going to be the first sort of fish that you're going to catch if you're using lures, most likely. Uh, it's the first fish that I caught when I was younger. It kind of gets kids into fishing because, you know, there's no patience really involved in it. Because literally, you could go along any rock mark, you could go along any fishing mark in general, cast out a spinner during the summer, and you'll most likely catch a macro. So, again, there's. A, I don't know if there's places that fish better for macro. I just think the sea in general is just going to be full with macro. If there's bait fish there, as we've seen before, which there is, then there's going to be macro. So, yeah. And obviously, if you're using anything with a bit of bling, like this super sprat, I just use this for everything sea trout, pollock, macro. Uh, that's half the battle. So, yeah. Decent. That's just at the bottom of the pier, guys. Uh, the tide is going out. Uh, it's not really affecting the fishing too much with regards to macro because I'm still hitting into shoals of them. So, again, I've never noticed if high or low tide was better. I've always just seemed to catch macro at any state of tide. So, yeah. Also, another thing I'd like to point out, guys, uh, I'd be stupid if I didn't, is <coughs> obviously... Macro fishing, or any fishing in general, you know, obviously you, you're going to go out for the day, have a good time, etc. Uh, so you might end up having barbecues or, you know, eating or drinking or something. I don't condone drinking alcohol while fishing, 
a, that's not something I, I, I would do personally, but if that's what you're into, then fair enough, if, as long as you do it safely. But again, all that excess litter, this is what a lot of anglers seem to hate, and me personally as well, is, you know, that squad of fishermen coming down the summer, coming down to the rock marks or pier marks and leaving all the litter or the line and you know it's just not ideal it's just it's idleness it's pure idleness so again if you're new to fishing always bring a plastic bag with you or a bin bag and if you do have rubbish take it home with you don't leave it lying about you know that's how fishing marks get closed like piers like this you know i know plenty of piers that have been uh, closed access to fishing because of that reason so it kind of spoils it for the rest of us. So, you know, think smart guys, you know, always bag up your rubbish. It's not hard. I thought I'd like to put that in the video and I'm sure most of you will agree. So, yeah. <laughs>